I'd left politics and I was happily out of politics. I was doing something that I really liked. I was involved in agriculture. I was consulting to some uh, black commercial citrus producers. And it was so amazing after the first year of being involved with them, with the fruit exporting company, we'd increased production by 30%. And we had a fantastic year and their turnover increased. And I, I was just doing stuff that I really like. And uh, Mr. Mashaba did try and call me in 2020. He did try and call me in 2020, but uh, I knew what he wanted, but hey, I didn't really want to talk to him. And then COVID came and, and we couldn't speak. And uh, then two years quickly went by and he contacted me again. And I flew up to Johannesburg and we had a long chat. And after about four hours of him convincing me to come and help him to fix South Africa by fixing the Eastern Cape, I said to him at the end of the conversation, I said, look, Herman, it sounds like a, a great idea and good luck, but I've had enough. And he looked back at me and he just looked straight in my eyes and he said, have you done enough? And you know, I live in a broken province, the Eastern Cape. On, almost on any index that you want to measure a province against another one, we come last. So I flew home and I asked myself a number of questions, you know, have I really done enough? And I was most concerned about my wife because I think she was enjoying having me out of politics. And when I got back, uh, I told her, I said, uh, you know, I haven't done enough. And she said, no, you must go and do it. And I must say, it's been interesting, uh, very interesting this time around. Completely different kind of political party to what I was involved in before. It just feels naturally, authentically South African because we're a melting pot of South Africans from all different parties, DA, ANC, PAAC, UDM, wherever. People that have just had enough of the status quo and they want to change the status quo. And I don't feel that Action SA has to do any kind of transformation. We, we actually represent what South Africa is, so it's been re really exciting. We don't have any coal mines in the Eastern Cape, so we don't experience the environmental degradation that we have in Mpumalanga and the northwestern provinces like that. If you fly over there, and I have flown over there, dams are black, millie fields are black, rivers are black, roads are completely destroyed because of coal trucks, lots of smog. We don't have that, which we, we're very fortunate, but we often don't have electricity because we are at the end of the energy provision. We do have wind, so there's a lot more wind uh, turbines and wind farms going up in the Eastern Cape because it's a coastal province, generates a lot of wind along the coast. And um, so we're interested, very interested in getting a ge uh, sort of energy generation mix of retaining some fossil fuels because that's where our greatest um, mineral resources are with coal and we've seen with Europe as they're running out of coal and what's happening in the Ukraine war Europe is wanting more and more of our top quality coal. The biggest problem in this country has been how fossil fuels have been used and who's providing them to the energy generating units. So for example we've been paying for five star coal and getting one star coal. People are, are stealing coal between where it's being mined and where it's supposed to be delivered. Our best coal is being exported. So th there's a lot of, I don't know, uh, corruption going on in the coal provision to provide energy. And we don't believe that the ANC have got it right. They, they, they just are overwhelmed when it comes to this energy crisis that we're in. President Ramaphosa was responsible for what was going on in Eskom in 2015. He's now appointed a Minister of Energy who knows nothing about energy provision. He can dance well, but that's about all. He can't keep the lights on. We're back to stage six now. And it looks like we're going to have it around for a long, long time, despite all their commitments. So we believe in Action SA, just by implementing better energy um, options that we can keep the lights on in South Africa. And we'll never be able to um, attract foreign direct investment into our economy if we can't uh, guarantee energy. Nobody is going to invest in South Africa anymore simply because you know we had Matiba and we had a, a peaceful transition and we would have this demo, you know, um, a constitutional democracy. Those days are gone. The honeymoon's over. People will come here because we are perfectly geographically situated in the world for trade. We're a springboard into Africa. We've got all the resources to generate energy but we can't provide a guarantee for energy. So nobody is coming to invest in South Africa. If we can address just that, we can address unemployment, we can address record urbanization, we can address many of the challenges that face South Africans in this country. We'll keep the lights on in Action SA. 
because we're not going to give generation over to comrades who are going to steal coal, who are going to transport coal on road when it should be transported on rail because they all happen to own trucks. We're just going to do things the right way, the way that they were done in the past. You know, South Africa used to be renowned for being the best energy generation country in the world. I'm not talking about Japan or China or America or Britain or Germany. No, no. South Africa was the best energy generating country in the world. We can do that again.